Before we get into today, like the goddamn video. Now every year, 60 college basketball stars achieve their lifelong dream of playing their beloved sport professionally in the NBA. These guys spend their entire lives gearing up for this moment, and to a lot of them, this came with sacrifice, one of which is financial sacrifice. To get to this point, entering in the NBA draft and expecting to be selected, these guys put in the work day in and day out, did what they had to instead of working a normal job like most guys do around their age, and guess what? But it paid off for 99% of these guys when they first get drafted this is the first time in their lives 18 19 20 years old that they are seeing their first payday and while NBA players are typically known for having the higher average salary among professional sports there is a lot of confusion concerning how much of a luxurious life these NBA rookies really live people think once a player is drafted they automatically are millionaires and are rich and unfortunately that's not really the case and even though we may see these guys guys buy six figure cars, get their mama a mansion or ice out their wrist, the truth of the matter is, there is a reason why rookies and players in their first contract go broke. So today we're going to dive into the very complex and harsh reality of how much these NBA rookies really make once they hear their name called on draft night. When they did my budget, I can only spend $500 a month. <laughs> I don't right. have any money, right. so I couldn't even drive. I couldn't even drive back and forth to the arena. So in the NBA, the draft is divided into two rounds. Round one, in which 30 players are selected, and round two, in which another 30 players are selected. Now this is extremely important because when it comes to how the rookie contract will be determined, the difference in being drafted at pick number 30 and pick number 31 is your money is not guaranteed that is correct first round picks 1 through 30 all guaranteed money while the second round picks 31 through 60 is not guaranteed that's why as an agent if the college player you take on who declares for the draft is not guaranteed to make it in the top 30 it is a huge financial risk for you because essentially you can be getting basically nothing as an agent and this is why we see a lot of players going back to school and not testing the waters of the nba draft because there is a financial stake depending if you're a first or second round pick now first things first we need to understand how a rookie contract actually works now just like it is important in the difference of being drafted in the first and second round it is also important where you are drafted in the first round because the lower the pick the more money you get now the nba works under something called a rookie salary scale basically meaning there is an x amount of money a player can make at each draft position for every pick that a player is taken before you the next slot earns a bit less money and so on so the difference in being taken first overall and fifth overall is actually a couple millions of dollars just for being taken a few spots behind as you can see of course the first overall pick will receive the most and it will continue to drop each and every slot the rookie skill increases each year as it will adjust to the new salary cap for the nba season now the number on the screen in each slot doesn't necessarily mean this is exactly how much that rookie will be getting because nba teams have an option that allows them to pay 80 percent all the way up to 120 percent of that number so for example, let's look at this year's number one overall pick, Cade Cunningham. According to the NBA rookie salary scale, Cade Cunningham was supposed to make 8.3 million for the first year because, you know, he's the number one overall pick who was heavily desired and is expected to be a superstar. He has leverage. And because of this, he can negotiate for more. So going back to what I originally said about the NBA teams can pay up to 120% of the rookie salary skill, that's exactly what happened with Cade Cunningham. He was paid the 120% of the 8.3 million, which now leaves them with 10 million, almost 2 million more. Now, for the most part, NBA teams and players are going to agree on the full 120% of their salary slots. However, there are few occasions when this does not happen. For instance, a couple years ago, Kevin Porter Jr., was the first player in a very long time to sign for just 80% of his potential salary. And while we are still on the subject, a rookie NBA contract would typically last through four years, but the first two are the only ones that are guaranteed. So after year two, the rookie now can exercise his option for both the third and fourth year of his rookie contract. And NBA teams have the option of keeping this player or not. Let's look at the 2019-2020 NBA draft for example. These players have completed the guaranteed part in their contract and are now exercising the third year option. This is where rookie contract extensions come in. This can only be done after year three from July 1st all the way to the day before regular season. 
so players like John Moran, Zion Williamson, and Darius Garland will be eligible to receive contract extensions this summer. The regular contract extension will last five years, which includes the final fourth year of these rookie contracts, so basically four new years on top of the previous four years. Jaron Jackson Jr., who was drafted in the 2019 NBA Draft, received his contract extension earlier this season, worth four years, $105 million. Now, Luka Doncic, who was also in that same draft, just signed in the offseason a five-year, $207.1 million deal. Now, you might be wondering, why does Jaron Jackson Jr. get to sign a four-year deal and Luka gets to sign a five-year one? Well, what Jaron Jackson Jr. got was a regular extension. What Luka Doncic got was what is called a designated rookie scale contract exception. The only criteria for this is that the first year of the designated contract must be worth at least 25% of the team's cap. So again, why does Luka get this and not Jaron Jackson Jr.? Well, it's simple. Do you think Jaron Jackson Jr. is worth paying 25% of the cap? Or do you think Luka Doncic, who has already been a two-time All-Star, two-time first team, is worth 25% of the cap? That's really what it boils down to how the franchise evaluates the player. Now, I threw a whole bunch of numbers at you, and I'm sure I've got some of you guys confused at this point, but that is the basics of how an NBA rookie contract and extension works, and you at least get a glimpse of an understanding of it. Now is where shit gets serious. You may be thinking, oh, these rookies are rich as fuck, and you may be getting lost in the sauce of seeing all these millions. However, for those who are not aware, NBA players, do not get the number they sign for. I'ma say that again. NBA players, which includes rookies, do not get the number they sign for. So let's go back to this year's draft class. We discussed earlier how Cade Cunningham is going to make over $10 million this season, which is the first year of his contract and is guaranteed over $20 million through the first two seasons. The biggest mistake a lot of rookies make across sports, not just the NBA, that leads to them being broke is thinking that the number they see on paper is actually what they will be walking away with. This is not the case and this leads to a lot of rookies going broke. For one, we have to take into consideration this thing called the NBA escrow. The NBA escrow is the NBA holding a certain percentage of players' salaries back as escrow in the event the league's revenue portion does not meet the guarantee in the collective bargaining agreement. If it does meet this number at the end of the season, they get all the money plus interest if it's somewhere between what they were paid and the escrow the players get back that amount to hit the players revenue number and the escrow percentage is basically 10% meaning 10% of what the number we see is gone so Cade Cunningham's 10 million just went down to 9 million 4,500 to some people this is still no big deal still got 9 million nope it does not end there there's this thing we all hate and it's called taxes man and of course the rich hate this more because it affects them the most 99 percent of nba players fall into the highest tax bracket which is at 37 percent so kate cunningham will be forced to pay the highest tax amount so after federal taxes is taken out this leaves kate cunningham with 5.7 million which is half of the initial amount we previously saw but it doesn't end there unfortunately there are still state taxes to pay and this differs depending on the state you live in. Some states actually have no state income tax such as Florida and Texas, while others have high state tax such as California, which is at 13.3%, which is the highest across the country. Concerning Cade Cunningham will play in Detroit, which is in Michigan, the state income is 4.25, which is roughly the average, so not too bad compared to other states. So after this is paid, this falls down to 5.4 million, 70,000. And guess what? We're still not done. NBA players still gotta pay their agents. NBA players' agents get on average 2 to 4% of the amount the player gets, which is where they are capped at. So because we're not 100% sure of how much Kate Cunningham's agent is getting, we're just gonna just say 3% just to be safe, which leaves him with 5.3 million and 6,000. And even after that, there are other factors too, such as 401ks and other smaller fees taken out before the player gets the final number. And for those who are saying 5 million is still a lot, while it is, and I'm sure 99% of us would love to see that number in our bank account, that's over 50% gone from that initial amount. And this is the number one overall pick. This number gets significantly lower when we look at all the other rookies. Let's go ahead and look at the 30th pick from last year's draft, which is Santi Aldana. He is guaranteed 1.9 million this season and 4 million over the next two seasons. After we take into account the escrow amount, 
federal income tax and the state taxes in which case his is zero because he's in Tennessee however there is this thing called a jog tax which is to simplify it the tax of athletes for playing in other states so while he's not being taxed for 41 of the 82 games for playing in Memphis when he goes on the road and plays in a state that does have income tax he will be taxed then and this really came in about the early 90s when the Chicago Bulls were notified after winning the finals against the Los Angeles Lakers that they will be taxed for the games played in Los Angeles. I can make a whole new video about this because there is a lot that goes down in jock taxes, but in Santi Aldama's case, after jock taxes taken out and agent fees, this leaves them with 1 million and 90,000. So from having nearly 2 million, this went to barely scraping 1 million. And even though he is the 30th overall pick for this last year's draft, there are still 30 players behind him who for the most part are going to make significantly less. Let's look at Herbert Jones, who was the 35th overall pick in this year's draft, who was actually having a pretty solid year for a second rounder. Herbert Jones is expected to make 1.7 million, and after escrows taken out federal income tax, state income tax, which is in Louisiana, which for that state is 6%, and Asian fees, this leaves him with $915,554. Less than a million dollars, man. This is to say that the number that may appear big at first really isn't even close to the money they actually get and especially for rookies who for the most part most of these guys are not even making or barely scraping that seven digits in their first year or two and i'm not saying this to feel bad for these guys to show sympathy i mean the poorest nba player is still in the top 0001 percent of all people in the united states and these guys are still well off financially but it is interesting to see how much of these nba rookies really get in the league where we constantly are seeing multi-million dollar deals i definitely want to hear what you guys think of this so in the comments let me know if you enjoyed the video and subscribe because more gems will be dropped in the future don't forget to follow me on my instagram now see you guys later